hi. Welcome to the behind the scenes of Tangled Parts. Episode one. Episode one. Well then, yeah, good, you can throw that in. Episode one. And then we'll cut to a montage. Action. All right, so we're rolling. That one's rolling. That one's rolling. And that one is rolling. Here's your, I'm rolling. He's Oxley. Uh, I've written it, and I directed the first one, we produced it together, I did the cho- fight choreography, I made the costumes, Matt wrangled crew for set, it's, um, we have been working non-stop on this. And, and that's, that. I mean, not just us, yes, we've put in a lot of work and shared the roles ourselves, we've had other people give input in terms of production, in terms of casting, in terms of DOPing, etc. And we relied a heck of a lot upon the volunteer work of thank so you, many people. Everybody that, that has chipped in for this, thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. The other thing was with the time limit and being road microphone, sound design was, was another really important factor for us. And so when we sat down to first say, well, what are we going to make? What are we going to shoot? Um, you actually had a lot of scripts already drawn I did. out. And I said, hey, look, the road competition is on. Let's shoot one of your films. And then you went and had another brain explosion. As I do. And yeah. came out with Tangle Parts. Yeah, we were, we were sitting there, look, I, I have a lot of sword fighty films and scripts sitting there, but there seemed to be, it needed something new. And we said it was sound design, sword fight. <laughs> Very few things out there better for sound design. Um, okay, so we've got that. Let's put it near a waterfall. Of course. We got that. The most annoying place to shoot a film that relies <laughs> heavily upon sound design. We're living in the middle of Sydney. Where do we find a waterfall? So now that we had, we knew we wanted a sword fight, we knew we wanted a waterfall, the next next part was actually coming up with a story that was decent, um, that would hold for five minutes. And the more we started playing around with the ideas and, and, and fleshing it out, this is when it eventually became episode one. We realised that the story we were trying to tell then was so much bigger than five minutes. Let people think that there was more before and more to come after, um, which there will be. So we sat down, fleshed it out, and now, yeah, I, I think, of what have I written? Four episodes so far. So there's four more, three more episodes on the boards uh, that we're going to get into very, very soon. This, this was one of our pr- problems is that you had these great ideas for this story, <laughs> which the more we've shot it and the more we've written more stories, have realized that there's this great twisting narrative, tangled, yeah. one might describe it as. Yeah. Um, that we we really want to produce. Two day shoot uh, at our wonderful little location, which we did get permission for. We did pay for the location. We did tell the police that we were gonna be down there with weapons. If you're making anything like this, I I do the same. Tell your local councils, get permission to shoot outdoors with any sort of weapons and make sure the police know exactly what weapons you're gonna have there, what you're gonna be doing. We'd set up the structure to shoot all the main dialogue in the first half of the first day. Then we had lunch and then we shot the three-way fight that you'll see in the second half. And Um, then on the second day, we started running right from the word go and shot the rest of the footage, which is essentially just the main fight fight between the protagonist and antagonist. We were shooting on the NTG3, shooting on location by a waterfall. We can pick up the vocals clearer than the waterfall. However, it also is a microphone that we're able to get a lot of the folly, the, the sounds of the, the swords hitting the scuffles on the feet. But then we also used it as uh, the microphone to pick up all the atmosphere. The next challenge, again, and that wasn't much of a challenge for this one, finding a cast that could pull this off in this film that you're seeing in the time that we, space that we had it. Uh, for that, I'm very thankful and grateful uh, to all of the guys that chipped in here, um, all students of mine from the Sydney Stage Combat School. Um, David Bolters, Blake Wells, Clive Hobson, Shen Moore, and there's a hidden cameo role somewhere in there, see if you can pick it. The only way we were going to get it in the short time that we we had and to the quality that you're seeing is by using trained professional stage combatants and all of these guys involved have been training with me for several years. Uh, Dodge and I, David Bolters, uh, put together the final sword fight that you see in about six hours. So if you like the sword fight and you want to we, plug, quick plug, um, sydneystagecombat.com. Yeah, we do casual classes four nights a week. Come and have a play. 
Oh, look, the, again, the weapons came straight out of the stock from the school. The swords you actually see being used in here are all aluminium. Um, High-grade aircraft aluminium swords that are made by a friend of mine in LA called Dave Baker. And Dave runs the Hollywood Combat Center. Two ten, hour, two ten and a half hour days we shot. And, and the second day was entirely Kyle and, and Dodge. Dodge just doing their that, duel. That, fight. that sweat that you see in the close-up <laughs> is <real>. Kyle's sweat. <laughs> and we didn't need to spray him with a water bottle. No. Um, so, and I was, both Dodge and I were, were sore across the shoulders for days afterwards. Um, just from running, if we had been running that with steel, we would never have got through the day. And what about the wardrobe? Wardrobe, I've been toying and playing with leather work for quite some time now. And I uh, have another little side company called Pendragon Armory um, that customizes, uh, specializes in custom made leather costumes and accessories. Um, here's a couple of the pieces behind us here. Um, and needless to say, they look amazing, which is why we wanted to use them on set, because we wanted them to look as authentic as possible. Being a zero budget film, we were using what we had available to us. Uh, we asked around a lot of people, um, DOPs, sound operators, costume, makeup artists, um, Rosie. The, the works. <laughs> we did um, our wonderful makeup artist, Rosie, uh, happens to be Blake's fiance. Rosie came on uh, to do makeup for us for both days. So there were people that weren't able to come on set even though they wanted to, uh, but a lot of these people were willing to lend their equipment. The day before, first day of shooting, I just happened to give a friend whom I met on another production a call who owned a Steadicam rig that I knew of. Turned out that he'd just picked up a remote follow focus and high definition monitor unit as well that day that I called him. And he said, yep, yeah, we'd love to pop on on set and give these new toys a spin. Mm -hmm. And that enabled us to get some really clear shots on the 5D, which was my camera that we were shooting on. Mm -hmm. um, and he was able to man the camera and just get a lot of those, those nice moving shots, which I uh, think were part of what makes the film what it was. Also had to make a uh, drive down and set up a zip line over the top mm -hmm. of the river and um, shoot a, a, a GoPro camera. Yeah down the line to get our, our opening shot. Opening shot. There are awesome. so many ideas we've got that we want to put into our other films. Um, I, driving home from set on the, at the end of the first day, I don't think I'd been happier in here for quite some time. Um, both of us have had the passion and the dream of, of making movies for, for a very, very long time. So we tried things on this set that were not the conventional way of shooting a film. And some of it worked, some of it was a great learning lesson. Um, we've taken a whole bunch of notes of what we'll do next time around. The point is we have technology, we have skills, we wanted yeah. to make a film, this was an opportunity. Thank you Rogue for giving us a deadline mm. because we put our money where our mouth is. Yeah. So we finished filming um, and we got our, all the footage straight off to... Kent, Kent. our editor, Kent. Kent. He. Uh, said that he would like to edit a fighting film. Yeah. So hey, we got a fighting we're film We're doing player. one. So we went around to Kent's house. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got his edit suite set up there yep. and we just kind of went through the footage. After that, we'll be getting the, the film off to a friend of mine, Jeremy Jed Silva. Uh, I've known Jed for years. He's a professional sound designer and mixer. Um, he's had a look at the rough cut and he's so excited to get his hands again on a, a fight film. Waterfalls, clanging swords, punching, kicking, costumes rustling, birds tweeting. He's like... You know, Not to mention the dialogue itself as well. Dialogue itself. Which we're probably going to have to ADR. This is a di dialogue replacement technique. And now a couple of impacts as if you're being hit. Like the, uh, the one that goes in the arm. We're looking for crew and extras yeah, <laughs> for future absolutely. episodes. If, if, if you've liked the product and you want to be part of the next episodes, um, please get in contact with us. Hey, look out, what's going Hello. on? Right here, I think, are the two main reasons why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Rick, you got a torch too. You got a light, we've got a light. That's right. Um, the... Oh, look, these, these are the future. And so we want to look after that future and yeah. hope that we can inspire other filmmakers to go out there and make this industry bigger and better. So for Hello. them, so that they've got an industry to walk into if they want. Hey, and there's mummy. All right. All righty. He's gone. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>